Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, lecture about the prenatal approach of uh, bilateral ecogenic kinase because it's a lecture that I love very much. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a real challenge, challenge sorry, in fetal medicine. And uh, when I was a fellow in St. Justin, uh, ecogenic kinase, when it's bilateral, was equivalent to polyquistos disease and the ARPKD form. But in fact, it's not. And uh, when you uh, are dealing with some uh, bilateral ecogenic kinase, you should do a complete fetal sonographic analysis looking for associated morphological anomalies uh, involving the extremities, uh, also the posterior fossa, the thorax and spine, and the bone, in general speaking, and the fetal biometry, because you have to look for macrosomia, but also for IUGR, and we'll speak about that later. The family history is so important, and in that case, the sonographic renal examination of both parents is mandatory. And after that, it would be a multidisciplinary approach with fetal medicine specialist, geneticist, nephrologist, and radiologist. And the biologic workup is also important with development of gene panel testing. So, first of all, analysis of the renal parenchyma. You have to know the size. It can be large kinase, it can be small kinase, it can be kinase normal for the age. You have to look at the cortical medullo differentiation. That means that it can be all echogenic, but the echogenicity can be on the medulla or in the cortex. Look at these different cases here. You see it's globally echogenic. This is in the medulla, and this is more in the cortex. And in fact, in important, to uh, differentiate this kind of uh, ecogenicities. Is there some cyst or not? The size, number, localization. Is it in cortex, medulla, cortex and medulla? And for that, it can be interesting to use high frequency probe to have a better analysis of this cyst. Well, how is the colic system? Is it dilated or not? How is the bladder? Is there any key hole sign or not? And how is the amniotic fluid? So, first of all, when we are dealing with bilateral echogenicase, we will focus on second and tri second and third trimester, because in the first trimester, as you know, it's a normal variant, because it's related to physiological echogenicity of the interstitial tissue, which decreases with nephrogenesis. So, we are dealing with this kind of echogenicase, and we will speak about nephrologic disease. So, urologic obstruction causes should be ruled out either bilateral, upper tract, or low urinary tract obstruction. Sometimes it's not very simple. As in this case, you see these patients at uh, 20 weeks, and you see it's globally eco uh, ecogenic, no corticomedular differentiation, and uh, there is no visible cyst, uh, there is bilateral pelvic dilatation and an empty bladder. Nothing else in, uh, when you scan all the baby and no familial history. What is this? In fact, uh, there was pathological examination because the parents asked for termination and there is diffuse cortical microcyst in the medullary. Uh, sorry, cortical microcyst and the dysplasia of the medullary. These cortical microcysts are, when it's uh, at the external part of the uh, kidney, are most of the time related to obstruction, and it was a fibrous and inflammatory disease of the UPG. So sometimes it can be difficult, and in that case, it was. So we are dealing with, in fact, uh, some bilateral ecogic kidneys related to nephrological diseases. So the first one, it's polycystic kidney disease. It can be the ERPKD form or the ADPKD form. If you speak, we are speaking about the most common, uh, the most known kinase, it's uh, uh, the ERPKD related to a mutation on the PKD1 gene on chromosome 6, and it gives rise to a physiform cystic dilatation of the collecting duct. In fact, it's mainly in the medulla, but it extends towards the cortex. But the outer cortex is spared. The main presentation is uh, the very huge 
kidneys detected in the second trimester with no corticoid medulla, so, so no CMD, and a decreased amount of amniotic fluid. And in that case, when you suspect this kind of disease, you should use the high-frequency probe because you may see the dilatation of the colic tubes in a radiated pattern. This is ecogic kinase. You are 24. The lens is uh, almost 40. There is no amniotic fluid. There is no SCMD here. And if you use the linear probe, you will see this. This is the cystic dilatation of the colic tube. And in that case, you have the perfect correlation with the pathological specimen. So this is the first presentation, the most common presentation. You have a less frequent presentation with kidneys less enlarged with a reversed CMD. Reverse, that means there is interfaces increase in the medulla with a normal amniotic fluid with a better prognosis. This is not a very frequent presentation. You see here, the ecogenicity is in the medulla. And this is a, a, a form, special form of ARPKD. So let's move to the ADPKD. You know that uh, it's more frequent, there is three genes. Uh, they double mutation in 10%, that means if you look at the uh, kidneys of parents, you will find a six cyst in 90% uh, of the case. The cyst uh, may be small or large, developed in the medulla and the cortex, and they are typically identified in the early uh, adulthood with a pro progressive enlargement. Cysts may be present in liver, spleen, and pancreas, and in prenatal, the most suggestive presentation in over 80% of the cases, and seen in the second half of the pregnancy, it's a moderate enlarged kidneys with an increased CMD. That means that there is a hyper echoic cortex related to sm multiple small cortical cysts at this stage. You cannot see the cyst, but you see the hyper echoic of the cortex, and the medulla is hyper echoic. So you have an increased uh, CMD. So this is this kind of patient. This is a mother, so you are sure that the mother has an ADPKD, which is known. And when you look at the kinase, you see you find that your, uh, your system very good this, this day because you see the uh, CMD uh, very pronounced. And if you continue during the pregnancy, it will be more pronounced like that. And this is the typical form of ADPKD. There is another form, which is the rare pseudo ARPKD form. It's the glomerulocystic variance. In that case, it looks like an ARPKD with a marked, markedly enlarged uh, kinase, no CMD, diffusely ecogenic, but the prognosis remains favorable unless oligoamnios develops. Maybe there is some kind of uh, kinase which look almost normal, but this is not known. Let's move to another pathology. Look at this kinase. They are ecogenic, more in the cortex. You see that there is a cyst here. But there is IUGR, there is a suspect cardiopathy, and the cortical column looks very, very thin. And in that case, it was a trisomy 13. That means that each case you have ecogenic kinase, you should do a karyotype to rule out any uh, trisomy or other karyotype anomalies. Now, look at these kinase. They look completely ecogenic. But if you do, you do your whole screening, you see that when you look at the epiphysis, there is calcification of the epiphysis, here and here. So you are dealing with a chondrodysplasia punctata. So you have this, but you have also this. Look, there is a diffuse polymicrogyria. What is the diagnosis? We are a few, dog. You, you can say <laughs> something. OK, this is very specific for a peri peroxisomal disorder. It's a Zellweger syndrome, okay? And uh, in fact, 
uh, we uh, uh, written uh, this article about the antenatal manifestation of this uh, metabolic disease. There are plenty of diseases like that, and in fact, we have divided this chapter into ecogic kinase, uh, some uh, ecogic colon, and uh, on the ecogic kinase, you will find, in fact, the per peroxisomal disorders, and there is also disorder multi sal uh, de uh, deficiency, some very rare disease. So let's move to no type of uh, lesion here, very ecogenic, some cyst here, and look at the biometry. Very huge baby, a macrosomia, and uh, in fact, uh, when you look at the alpha phyto, it's uh, elevated, and the CGH show a large duplication involving one gene in, involved in beckwith windman syndrome. And so we are in the case of macrosomia, a syndromic macrosomia, with the classic appearance of a beckwith windman uh, or this one. So this is, in fact, very, very simple. Another findings close to the kidney that you can find, this patient was referred to us for ecogic kinase, yes, but also look at the adrenals. The adrenals are enlarged, and there is some cyst in the adrenal. You know what this? It's a very specific finding for Beckwith-Winman, because in Beckwith-Winman you have you may have bilateral hemorrhagic adrenal cyst, as in this case. So this is not very frequent. Because with man is not very frequent, and because with man with this kind of presentation is not very frequent. But if you see this large uh, adrenals, you are sure that you are dealing with a big with So let's move to uh, macrosomia. So big with man, there is also Perlman, uh, uh, go, go, uh, Golabi Bedel uh, syndrome. Uh, let's move to other. Uh, causes of ecogic kinase, ciliopathies. In that case, because you are dealing with autosomal recessive disease, the family history is important. Is there any exadactyly, meningocele, or uh, osteodysplasia in the family, posture for anomalies? And the first one is Bardebidol. You know, there is mutation in more than 16 genes. And it's, uh, in fact, characterized by post-axial uh, ex exadactyly, progressive obesity, but it's the obesity after birth. This is very important because it's the diagnosis, the pigmented retin retinopathy, renal dysplasia, hypogodadism, and intellectual disability. And the retinopathy, retinopathy is the only constant finding. The diagnosis will be based on the familial history, if you have index cases, but the main findings, it's exadactyly and ecogic kinase. But all this will be found in all situations. So that means this is not specific for Bardebidol. So can we do some uh, stuff on the gene? There is very large gene, so the workup to do this in the prenatal is very difficult. But it's very difficult to get the information if you do not have your information and the family, if you, do know the gene, don't know, if you do not know the gene, you will not do this workup uh, in the prenatal period. So the renal presentation, uh, most of the time, it's diffusely ecogenic kinase with lack of CMD. In some cases, you may have some cyst in the medulla. Uh, for ciliopathies, most of the time, it's in the medulla. But we will speak about Michael Gruber, for Michael Gruber, it's in the middle, it's very large, and the tract is normal with abnormality field, which is normal. And important findings, uh, sometime after birth, there is normalization of the ecogenicity of the kidney, and the, uh, the ecogenicity becomes pathologic after two years. So if there is a trans uh, transient uh, normalization, uh, don't say it's nothing. Uh, it's normal to have a normalization in the first month of life. So this is this kind of uh, ecogenic kinase here. Uh, you see it's bilateral, very ecogenic. And if you look, there is too much fingers. 
and uh, you have this kind of uh, anomalies. Most of the time, it's post-axial uh, anomalies, and the baby at birth. This is uh, uh, very easy because a history of Bardebidol with uh, too much uh, cyst, but this form is very particular because most of the time it's echogenic and you have some cyst. Here you see it's a honeycomb appearance. This is more the form that we'll find in Michael Gruber syndrome. Because in Michael Gruber syndrome, which is also ciliopathies, you have a post-axial uh, dactyly, some CNS anomalies with occipital defect, and the uh, kidneys are more enlarged with medullary cystic dysplasia. And it's very early, uh, and this cystic medullary dysplasia is more extensive and develop earlier in uh, Michael Gruber. And it gives rise to an enlarged and hypoacute medulla with a two pronounced CMD. And this is with often oligomamios. You see, is this, you see it's like an honeycomb appearance uh, of the kidneys. So maybe in some case, it's not hypo, uh, hypo, uh, hyperacogenic, it's more uh, hypo than hyper. You see that, uh, you are sure that you are dealing with a uh, Michael Gruber. So, uh, we, can speak, we cannot speak about ciliopathies without speaking about Joubert and Joubert-like, this most common ciliopathies, and you know the molar 2 sign. So, uh, most of the time, uh, the kinase can be of normal size or enlarged, and sometimes very large. And most of the time, there is lack of uh, CMD, and there, miss, uh, there may be cysts uh, at the junction between the cortex and the medullary. Like this, uh, kinase, which are very large in that case, and if you look at the brain here and here, you see the thickening and the elongation of the cerebellar pendicles, which is typical of the molar 2 sign. Maybe you may not know that some osteochondral dysplasia, like Jeune or Ellis Van Creuvel syndrome or Campolomelic dysplasia, are true ciliopathies. And I will show you one ciliopathies which is not well known, but uh, we uh, encounter this case in our casuistic. It's a serpentine fibula related to notch 2 mutation. This is a case where there is a, a fibula bowing here. And it was the same uh, thing on uh, the uh, forearm. And the ecogity was increased, not very large in that case, uh, you, as you can see, and uh, this is, in fact, this uh, serpentine fibula, which are related to notch 2 uh, mutation, and it was proven in our case. So, you are here now. Is it complete? There is many uh, etiologies, but the main etiologies are not in the panel, because what is the main etiologies? which is a nephrological disease. It was shown uh, by a guy from Toulouse, a nephrologist, that one-third of ecogic kinase are related to mutation of TCF2 mutation, which is uh, this, which is responsible for HNF1 beta, uh, which is, in fact, the hepatocyte nuclear growth factors 1b. It's the main cause of fetal bilateral ecogic kinase, and the recommended terminology is to pick, speak about HNF, HNF uh, and, uh, more than TCF2 mutation. And it regulates development and growth uh, of various tissue, liver, kidneys, intestine, pancreas. It's responsible for maturity onset diabetes type 5. And it gives rise to on, not only renal cyst, but also a various uh, other renal anomalies and genital malformation, ranging for agenesis, hypoplasia, or through kinase, cystic dysplasia. And there were, there, were, there were several mutations which may lead to different phenotypes, and uh, it can be a point mutation or it can be microdilation. And 50% of the patients have, in fact, an anterior genes dilation relating to a microdilation on chromosome 7. And this chromosome, this deletion, contains uh, more than 15 genes. And because of that, there is some uh, contiguous genes which are responsible for epilepsy 
and psychomotor delay. The gene itself, it's not responsible for a poor connective outcome, but when it's a deletion because of the uh, contiguity gene syndrome, you may have some cognitive uh, problems. What is uh, the presentation of TC2 mutation or HNA4? Uh, it's a very variable renal pattern, ranging from small to large. You have all kinds of uh, malformation, uh, ecogenicity and size. Uh, most of the time, there is a, a, a CMD which is decreased, but it can be, in some cases, also increased. Uh, similar to ADPKD. There may be cortical cysts, so there may be uh, urinary tract dilatation. Most of the time, anemotic freak is normal, and there are rare progression to end stage renal disease. There may be genital anomalies, more frequent in females than males, and you may have also pancreatic and biliary anomalies. And the pancreatic hyperplasia <laughs> is very specific to this mutation but you can also have colloidal cyst, and we have a recent case with colloidal cyst and TCFT mutation with ecogic kinase. So the main presentation is this. You have uh, here a uh, uh, multiple cystic disease, disease kinase here, so uh, very ecogenic cyst. In that case, uh, you are 24, you expected a hypertrophy of the other kidney. In that case, there is no hypertrophy at all, 23 millimeters, two ecogenic, some cysts. Look at the kidney of the parents. It, uh, alpha cases are de novo, but alpha cases are related to mutation in the parents. And in that case, you see small kinase with some cysts within it, and it was a TCF2 mutation. This is another case. Uh, look, there is ecogenicity, there is some cysts, and there is no other malformation in the, in the boy, and the parents have some cyst in the kidney, is TCF2 mutation. But another typical uh, aspect of this mutation is this. You see, you are not dealing with ADPKD, but you are dealing with increased uh, differentiation between the cortex and the medulla. And this is in the case where the both parents are normal ultrasound, you know that in 50% it's possible. But, but if you think about ADPKD, uh, most of ADPKD in 90% is uh, inherited from the parents. So you may, when you see this, you are, are more confident with TCF2 mutation than ADPKD. So when facing increased CMD, think about ADPKD and TCF2 gene mutation and look at the kidneys of the parents. So, it's almost complete because you see uh, all these etiologies. You may also have rare etiologies like uh, nephrotic syndrome finish type uh, or bilateral venal ventrombosis or maternal induced diseases. This is a case of a pregnancy discovered at six months and the uh, the mother had a hypertension. And because of that, she was treated by angioantensin 2 re receptor blockers. And she came with uh, very ecogic kidneys, oligoamios, and uh, we replaced uh, the medication by loxen with a progressive normalization of the amniotic fluid, but no normalization of the kidney. And in that case, it was, in fact, a poor uh, outcome for this baby. This is a case where you see it's very ecogenic, but it's only on one uh, ecogenic and enlarged. So this is very typical for thrombosis of a renal vein. In, the, in, uh, in that case, you should look at the inferior vena cava. Sometimes the thrombus, the thrombus uh, uh, involves also the IVC, and it can involve also the bilateral uh, the uh, contralateral renal vein, and in that case, we would get two ecogenic kinases. We were, most of the time, very large. So, to conclude, uh, as you see, uh, when I was a fellow, uh, ecogenic kinase was ARPKD, point. Uh, 
Now you know that there is a lot of etiologies. Uh, you should look for the familiar history, should look for the renal son of both parents, and sometimes it's detection of uh, unknown familial diseases, uh, carotype or CGH, uh, look for associated morphological anomalies, extremities, CNS anomalies, long bones, uh, look for the biometric data with the case of macrosomia, the case of IUGR with uh, trisomy 13, and it's always a multidisciplinary approach uh, with uh, now a major interest in the development of uh, gene panel testing. And in our center, uh, we have developed uh, NGS, and the result is in two or three weeks. So when we are facing ecology kinase at 22 or 20, uh, we ask for this panel, uh, and we have all this gene. And it's maybe interesting, because if you are dealing with Joubert syndrome, um, I can do something about Joubert syndrome, but uh, you have many uh, genes, more than uh, now I think we are almost as 30 genes, and there is no good correlation between the uh, phenotype and genotype. But for some genes, we know that if the gene, uh, uh, this gene is involved, the uh, cognitive outcome will be better than other genes. So, uh, this is important because Joubert syndrome, uh, one third of patients have a normal IQ. So, if you uh, know the gene and you know that this gene is uh, associated with a good prognosis, or most likely good prognosis uh, regarding the intellectual development, it could be very interesting to have the genes in the prenatal period to improve the prenatal counseling. Thank you for your attention.